So now, there's different concepts for some, not, not concepts, but that there's different chords. Oh, Cooley John just popped in. By the way, guys, if you want a necklace, shoot me a line at wrr4 at gmail.com. It's at my website. You can find out where to contact me. Let, uh, let me know where to send them. They're free, and you get one signed by me. Guitar pick necklace. Awesome. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's do this. Also, uh, also the merch store gets, uh, gets dropped down next week. All right. So here's my seventh chords, okay? I have different kinds of seventh chords. I can have my C7, okay? I can have my C major 7. I can have a C minor 7. I can have a C9 chord. Not that this is a seventh chord, but this is a type of dominant chord, okay? There's a cool little trick here that whenever you have the letter and the number, whether it's C11, C13, C9, C7, when it's the letter and the number, only, that's another Twitter, that's another Twitter message, another Twitter message, um, okay, is that when it's only these notes, okay, the number, or the letter, and then the number, that means that it's one thing, a dominant chord. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, what the heck, Walt, is a dominant chord, um, okay, and the way it works is like this, um, sorry, wait, let me this up. Okay, so that the way that it works is like this. That when you hear a piece of music, like a blues song, I totally just walked around my, my chair. I just felt like walking around my chair. You, you guys ever do something like that? All right, so here, check it out. When I play a blues song, ready? Okay, or if I do uh, like, you know, something like this. sounds are all dominant chords. When would I use a dominant chord? This, the simple answer is that I use dominant chords in order to move from one note to the next, or one chord to the next, and it drops down like this, okay? Then I'm going to play an A7 right here. Okay, where is that A7 going to move to? Does anybody know where an A7 wants to move? Where's, I want everyone right now, pull out your guitars, and your pianos from your pocket. See, look, here, here's mine. Okay, where's that A7 chord gonna, go, uh, gonna lead? Where's this chord gonna go? What if I said, th said this chord? Okay, and that's where it wants to go. The A7 wants to go to a D chord. Right here. Or if I can do it here. Alright, so or if I were to do G7, it wants to go to a C. Alright, so here's how dominant chords work. Is that a dominant chord is actually the fifth, the fifth of the chord that you're in. Okay, and it works like this. All right, let's take my C7 chord right here, okay? Kill the house lights, okay? My C7 chord, the next chord after my C7, where does that want to go? It wants to go to my F major chord. Why the heck? Why does it want to go to my F major chord, okay? The reason why, now I got to pick it up, okay? The reason, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, the reason why it wants to go to my F major chord is because my C7 is the fifth of that of that key. Let's walk up. F, G, A, B flat, C, or you just not, not make this a B flat and then just say B natural. Okay? Move in. Move in. Cool. Alright. F, G, A, B, C. The way that it works is like this. One, two, three, four, five. So when I play a C7 chord, it's actually the fifth chord, the fifth note of my F major scale. And the seventh chords always, 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 always want to move back to the one. So if I were to say that this is a D7, or nah, not D7, that, you know, that's cheating. Let's say, uh, let's say this is an E7, okay? Where's that want to go? Where's the, where's that, where's that E7 want to go? 
And the answer is that it wants to go to an, an A major chord. So let's play this. By the way, I'm going to jump to the chat in a second. Neil and Mac definitely just dropped.